Hi, I'm Dan McClellan, your Chargers Raptor reporter for CBSSports.com, and this is your Chargers Raptor Report recap show, where typically I take a look at a few of my reports each week, break them down, and give you a little bit of information going into each week's game. But this week, the Chargers have their bye weeks. So what we'll do is take a look at a few of the reports and give you a better sense of where the team is at right now. Here is the first report. Coach Norv Turner said the Chargers are doing a lot of things well. He pointed out that the offense is in the top three in preventing three and outs, and the defense is in the top five in causing three and outs. San Diego also has the sixth-ranked offense, fifth-ranked defense, is ranked third in penalties, and is ranked first in time of possession. For the first time under Coach Norb Turner, the San Diego Chargers are off to a fast start at 4-1. and one. Typically, they'd be sitting at 2-3 and three right now. Yet, there seems to be a lack of excitement around the team. And really, that's because they haven't beaten any of their opponents convincingly, whether that be the Vikings, the Chiefs, the Dolphins, or the Broncos, all of which are considered not to be very good teams, and all of whom could have beaten the Chargers. Yet the bottom line is, they did win those games, and they are sitting off at a 4-1 and record right now, five games into the season. A year ago, the Chargers had horrible losses early on in the season to the Chiefs, the Seahawks, the Raiders, and a few others. Ultimately, they finished the season at 9-7. and seven. It wasn't good enough to make the playoffs. The difference is they are winning the games now that they had lost a year ago. All those wins are going to count at the end of the season, and I think it's going to be the difference for this team to make the playoffs. The bottom line is they are doing a lot of things well, and yes, those stats may be padded against inferior teams. The bottom line is this team tends to get better as the season progresses under Coach Norb Turner. And right now, they're already doing a lot of things well. If they can just tighten up a few things, I think you're going to see a very solid San Diego Chargers team as the season progresses. Coach Norv Turner is focused on improving the team's red zone efficiency during this week's spy. The offense is ranked 25th in the red zone. They have only scored touchdowns in 40.91% of their opportunities. We spent quite a bit of time in the red zone, Coach Norv Turner said. We will continue to do that with the extra time we have next week. If there's one area the Chargers really need to improve on, it is their red zone efficiency. There's a number of reasons why they've been inefficient in the red zone. Sometimes it's just been bad luck. It's been one poor play. But in large part, I think it's because of the play of the offensive line who really hasn't played up to standards yet. It's a senior veteran offensive line who's all been with this team for a number of years now. Yet Phillip Rivers consistently finds himself under pressure, uh, has to unload balls, has to uh, force it into uh, coverage at times, which has led to interceptions. Rivers has seven interceptions uh, so far this season, which is very un-Rivers-like. So Rivers needs to do a better job in his decision-making, which he has done in recent weeks, but the offensive line needs to do a better job for him and giving him some protection. Now, fortunately, despite their red zone inefficiency, they have been able to get points on these drives because Nick Novak, who was signed after Nate Kading towards ACL and the season opening kickoff, has been 11 for 11 in his field goal attempts. Really quite impressive for a player who's 30 years old and hadn't played in the league for over two years and has, had only kicked 19 of 30 previous field goals in his career. So to go 11 for 11 is quite an accomplishment. But the reality is, is Novak probably isn't going to be perfect for the season. And as the Chargers progress in their schedule, they're going to be playing much more difficult opponents who have a stronger offense, who are going to get more points on the board. And if they don't convert these red zone opportunities into touchdowns and leave all these points you know, on the field, they're going to start narrowly losing games instead of narrowly winning games. So the red zone efficiency needs to improve right now. This season, running back Ryan Matthews has 674 combined yards. He needs just 149 more yards to match his rookie season total of 823 yards. Coincidentally, twice this year, Matthews posted 149 yards of production in a game. Running back Ryan Matthews is on pace for 2,157 combined yards this season. To put this into context, 
Ladanian Tomlinson's best year for combined yards was 2003 when he had 2,360 yards. In 2006, he also had 2,323 yards. So it is arguable to say that Matthews is on pace for a Tomlinson-like year. However, for Matthews to have a Tomlinson-like year, he is going to need to stay healthy. Last year, he was held back because of a high ankle sprain. Last week, he suffered a calf and a wrist injury, but should be ready to go by the time the Chargers play the Jets after the bye. The bottom line, sometimes Matthews is very aggressive in his style of play, and that aggressiveness leads to injuries. Matthews needs to run low, be smart, let plays develop, and if he can do that, he's going to finish the year with some very big numbers. And that all bodes very well for the Chargers, because ultimately... Whatever team comes out of the AFC and gets to the Super Bowl is likely going to have a balanced offense. We know the Chargers can throw the ball with Phillip Rivers despite his seven interceptions so far this season. Rivers himself is on pace to throw for more than 5,000 yards this year. If they can also get it done on the ground with Matthews, then I think the Chargers have a really good chance to finish the year strong and be a competitor in the playoffs. That concludes this week's Chargers Wrap Report Recap Show. Please come back next week when we'll break down the Jets game. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel or follow me on YouTube at San Diego Sports or just visit CBS Sports nearly every single day for your latest Chargers information. Once again, I'm Dan McClellan, your Chargers Wrap Reporter for CBSSports.com.